I play with my green bullet uh, connected to my pedal board and like you when I'm playing on stage I move around and when I move around that means I'm turning in a circle and my 20 foot cord becomes a six foot leash because it twists up and then the first twist is what's limiting it so all of a sudden 10 foot of the cord went away and every subsequent turn becomes a, a tighter and tighter leash so I fixed that uh, by building a, a slip ring and what the slip ring does is allow me to have a bearing here that will turn. So this part of the cord will always turn, which is going to the pedal board. This part connects to my mic and it stays with me. So uh, what I've done here is put a slip ring inside. I'm going to show you the instructions for building that following this clip. But it allows the cord to unravel while I'm moving around. So as I am turning, so is this part with me and it keeps the cord going to the pedal board stationary. It's a slip ring. I also have plugs for my in-ear monitor uh, to go through, which uh, makes this really kind of nice. It doesn't weigh a lot. Let me show you how I connect the mic to me while I'm playing and how this is, uh, and show you this in operation. This is how I typically mic myself up. So I have my green bullet. I've taken a piece of leather and I wrapped it around the cord. I put the leather through my belt. That way, as I move around on stage, I'm not having to manage a cord by holding on to my microphone, which I find rather annoying. Some people slip it over their shoulder, but I, I like this better. I, I hook the cord to my belt, and that way, as I'm moving around on stage, my body's moving the cord for me, and I, it doesn't ever bother me playing while I'm playing my blues harmonica. The problem with this is, is as you turn around on stage back and forth, it's wrapping up this cord and it gets more wrapped up the, the more I, I move around. So the slip ring uh, stops that. Let me show you how the slip ring inserted into the cord and where it, how I have it designed. This is with the slip ring installed. Again, I've I've connected my mic, this part of the cord, which I want to uh, move with me, this part from a belt to me, uh, is always in the same location. I'm pulling the cord around, uh, again, through the slip ring. This time, though, as I'm moving around, uh, this part, if the cord tangles up, this part's going to be rotating to un uh, keep the cord from untangling uh, up and becoming a leash. Again, here's my in-ear monitor jacks. I have one there, I have one here uh, for it. It, uh, it. it doesn't weigh any more than having the cord hooked to it. It's probably about, oh, half a pound, because I've had, actually the weight is because of the connectors here and here. But uh, that's where it stays while I'm playing around on stage. And then as I move around, you know, the cord's not, not tangling up. It stays a 20 foot a cord and never becomes a six foot leash. If you like this design or you're interested, uh, following now I'll show you the components you need and how uh, to put it together. So the goal of the project is to make sure that the materials that you need are mostly available from a local plumbing store. Uh, first things first, a three quarter inch PVC th cut three inches long. That's all you need. Uh, it's fairly inexpensive stuff. So none of these things, with the exception of the slip ring itself, cost very much. So we need one of those. Next thing you're going to need are some cable ties. Not really big ones, but just enough that we're going to put, if you look on screen, we're going to put a cable tie in this area so that it doesn't, the cable doesn't pull out. And we'll have a cable tie here so it doesn't pull out that way. If you'd like to, you can fill uh, this uh, barbed fitting uh, with hot glue in order to pot the cable into place. Next thing you're going to need are two end caps. They will go either side, and this is about this will compress in a little bit more. Uh, three quarter inch end caps are normally fairly flat at one end, and they're definitely flat inside. 
This one has an embossed face, so I'll sand that down smooth first. I first start with some rough stamp paper and then use like 50 grit to, to shine it up again. I need to bore a hole. And the reason for this is you're going to need one of these. I need a bearing out, the, the, out this one end. So on screen, this is what's going to your pedal board and this is what's going to you as holding the mic or the guitar and this device here I didn't want very big I want I want it to be able to, to float fr freely on the line without adding too much weight so we need that but this is a PEX fitting you uh, connect this you sweat this onto copper pipe half inch copper pipe and at this side you'll put PEX pipe on and then that makes that connection. So this is called a barb fitting. But it's a half inch to half inch female sweat adapter barb fitting. Uh, I went down to a hardware store. I found that because it's nice and smooth and round. And when you drill a hole at the end, it'll fit in there. And it's going to provide me the bearing that I need that's going to drop down and go to the pedal board. Now what keeps that in place? Well, the other th what's keeping it in place, the other th reason I picked this is because it's almost the, I, the OD of the brass fitting is almost the ID of the three quarter inch pipe. So that's, that, that's good. But the problem gets down to if we put this in uh, like so, what's going to keep it from uh, dropping through uh, the device? So what you have to do you're going to have to do this first. I, I cut a, uh, drill a 5 8 inch hole. Drill the hole first. And then I cut this out of quarter inch plywood. And what that's going to do is fit in to the end of the PVC pipe like so. And that becomes, um, that will keep the brass fitting from dropping through. How do you adjust it? Then what you do, put the PVC, put the brass fitting in here, put the PVC together, push it together, and if it's still, if it's too tight, you just give it a, a, a bump or two, and then it'll keep it from launching through. Now then, let me put that to a side. The other thing you need to do is to Let me pull this thing apart again. It's really tight. The other thing we need to do is put the slip ring in. Now you have to buy this slip ring, and I show you on the screen. It's a miniature slip ring, uh, 12, mi 12 millimeters, almost half inch in diameter, six wires. I need three wires from a microphone. I need three wires from an in-ear monitor, and I need three. Out so they're connected to three out wires coming out uh, to the microphone and the in-ear monitor. It's going to hang this way. So on the screen, the, the brass fitting, this is actually on the bottom side. This is this side's coming up to you, to your microphone or your guitar. We need to hold that perfectly vertical in the tube. And what you'll notice when you just let it dangle into the uh, tube is that, throw it this way. it can actually be offset. It's going to turn. I don't know that's going to make a big difference, but it just still, it, it kind of annoys me. So what I did was I got a tube of cardboard and I rolled it up. Just get yourself a pencil, you roll up the tube, it'll spring tight, you know, it, you roll it tight and it'll spring out a little bit. And when it springs out, you want to tape it so that the OD of the tube is the same as the ID of the PVC and that way the uh, slip ring will sit in there without being offset so it's going to be held in a position and you want to cut that tube you want to cut that tube as I shown on screen kind of like this. So the uh, quarter inch um, spacer that we've already inserted, it, it butts up right about here. So when this tubes go in, it's going to be flush 
and then when you put the other end cap on it's not going to move it holds the uh, adjustment ring on the inside uh, of the brass thing in place and then everything's going to be ready to go so what else do you need well the other thing we're going to need is to hold the cable uh, inside the cap we're going to use uh, some ties like this and to put around the cable to keep it from pulling out and then uh, since it won't pull out you don't want the caps coming off there it's kind of a tight fit so I've sanded this down a little bit in order to help myself get this thing on but you don't want it pulling out under you know normal use so what I'm going to do is drill three holes and put some tiny set screws in that will go through the cap into the body of the other PVC to hold the caps on in case I didn't want to take it apart to fix something I have no idea what but that will do another thing I'm going to need is I on my mic even though I'm running a green bullet I have it wired for an XLR I prefer an XLR because they stay connected I don't lose connection I don't really like a quarter inch when I'm playing because it moves around and I lose connection or something they just I don't like them so I use these where if you're using a, a regular mic you're going to need these anyway and then what I need to do from in your monitor I need uh, the male end and female end so what I did was I went out and bought something like this I just bought a stereo splitter so I'm going to cut this out to go to the in-ear monitor and then I'm going to use this side and that's going to go to the uh, in-ear uh, monitors uh, amplifier which is down the, my uh, pedal board so I'm going to lose this piece four bucks that's all you need to do and a little and then since there will be a wire cut here just put some heat shrink on that in order to close it up and make it a little bit you know make it look nice uh, you can use anything else the idea was go cheap so I did the most expensive part here is the slip ring. It's 17 bucks online plus six bucks shipping. It's 23 bucks. This is the only high tech thing you have to buy online. Everything else uh, you can obtain locally. So what I'm going to do next is show you the sequence uh, necessary to put it together. What we're going to do is build, put it together, starting at this end and going working back because we need to make these solder connections uh, on this side first and then this side and then we have to slip it back up through the barrel put the end caps on and then we're ready to play this is the first part of the assembly these connections are both male connections they go to the pedal board we want to keep those fairly short so as we turn around with the cord they'll they'll turn easily uh, here's the bearing I put a couple tie wraps in here and then once the tie wraps it in you want to pull them in where they don't go any further but they must be inside the bearing area and then this is a from the uh, slip ring to the connections this is approximately an inch so when this thing is sitting inside the bearing this slip ring is going to be approximately in this area of the tube and then once this is done we're going to make the other part of the connections on this side and feed it back through this is the final assembly on this side this since this barrel is going to be halfway up the, the slip ring is halfway up on the barrel of the connector I've allowed a uh, few extra inches here on the connections because I can always fold them over and stuff them up to, into the top of the barrel because this side is not going to rotate so if these wires actually are folded and contact the side of the barrel no problem this has to be kept short because you don't want them contacting the barrel before I put it in I will probably squish these things up and put a small uh, wrap it with a couple uh, wraps of string and tie it off so they don't spread and that way it makes a shaft that will rotate through the connection at this point before you put heat to the heat shrink tubing go check the connections making sure left's left right's right the mic's working all that and when that's done we'll do the final assembly this is the final product I drilled on the end that goes towards me 
which it's hanging from my belt this way. I, I drilled two separate holes because on the inside, when you put the strain relief in, you, you it will pull them together and keeps and makes for a better strain relief. On this side, I've shown you previously, I used two uh, tie wraps in, in order to do basically the same thing, but they are, they are in the recess area of the bearing. This is the bearing part. The slip ring is designed for robotics. It's designed for 300 RPM. And for robotics, it's, it's processing a control signal, which is in the megahertz. They're gold contacts. That's important. Uh, at the uh, couple hundred hertz to a couple thousand hertz that we're dealing with in music and playing guitars, you're, it's, the fidelity is going to be there. And again, the contacts of the slip ring are gold plate. So that is going to be a great connection to make. This is the slip ring. It keeps my cord from becoming a leash. I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching.